Hello and welcome to Farming Simulator 19. I'm Andy and this is the let's play on the React Top Code. So we are here ready to do our first field of silage. So we're gonna unfold our big M here. Just gonna make sure it's set to which it in shouldn't be. Toggle work on control Y. Spot dropping. Left, right, wide spread. Spot dropping. Okay, so good. So we'll start it up and then we can lower it. So we'll sort of draw. Let's just see if that actually, yes, drops a swath of grass there. Good. So we'll do sort of a headland first and then we'll go and, and do, do, do the rows after this. this gonna be turn out well but oh we'll, we'll see not that good at this contour and mowing thing but we'll give it a shot see if it works so if we follow this one probably okay that's the left one left spot So hope everyone is doing okay out there. I'm doing fine. I'm sort of working away here. Um, on Bjarke Top Farm, um, decided to do grass though, so, and I have. I think I should do all the grass fields while if I'm doing this. So that's what I'm doing: all the grass fields, mowing, um, baling it, and putting it into um, silage, wrapping it. To do that, we need to do a headland and then we'll do the rows. So here's one of these bales I forgot about here. So we'll just push it out of the way. It's probably still stuck there. Yeah, it is. So we'll go just up to here and we'll sort of drop it there. Oh, it could go all the way. Hold. So, so I'm going to try and put it here, see what happens. Uh, so we'll start for the uh, headland, and now we're going to go and do the rows, basically. So. That's right. it's, I mean, this is extremely fast. 25 kilometers per hour mowing. I don't know if there's faster mowers. Maybe there is. But this is really fast, so. like a lot of grass in here it fertilizes it like to grow good good so a well, good cut I believe missed a bit there no I don't know actually I haven't seen Oh no. We'll run with this one. Oh, here. 
I'm not using this well, am I? Ah, we'll fix that next row. I messed up. I should have gotten the width there from the beginning. Now it's, everything is a little bit off, so this line will be off. And also on the other side there it will be off probably. Was probably Sort of squeaking by though. Hey, it's nice. No, oh, it's nice. And this goes a little bit too fast, so it's slightly. It feels a little bit like I'm stressing everything. Row. Hopefully, I got it. No, probably missed some a bit. No, oh, actually, we got it. That's good. Go up. Actually, we'll do another headland, I think. this so I mean this is doing this with a tractor would be would take a little bit longer so this is a fairly efficient way of, of doing this this but it's a very efficient way of doing this actually consider the amount of hay you get or oh sorry grass in this case of this field so that's good <laughs> one two tractors up there Just waiting for that turn to do something. Next row. Um, so this episode is basically going to be mowing and uh, bailing and that sort of stuff. Just that sort of stuff. If I can get here. It does turn really nicely. Just turns really on a dime. I think that's pretty brilliant construction. The turning radius is so small. When you get to your end row, you just turn, you don't even have to turn maximum to get around to the next row. So that it's an awesome thing, actually. Awesome, too. Awesome, awesome, too.
did you know uh, just thinking about this theory um about how we judge how beautiful people are i thought it an interesting i don't know why i thought suddenly thought about that well actually i, did, I know so my friend uh she went out on um Like partying with her friends yesterday, and she sent me a picture from the party, and it was uh, with her girlfriends, and she has this these girls' friends who she thinks is are beautiful, and uh, they are beautiful women, they are, I would definitely say that, and so it gives rise to what beauty is, how would you define beauty, and who is beautiful and who isn't beautiful. I mean, most people would contend that beauty is something that's actually like part of your personality and, and other, stuff, other stuff, it's not just based on, it cannot just be based on you know, y the appearance, even though appearance seems to be what it's mostly based on. If you look at what people judge as beautiful. Who or who maybe people who judge as beautiful rather? So it's kind of interesting. Um, so my friend there has a, f a, a, a girlfriend who is not girlfriend, as in girlfriend, uh, friend who is a girl, more in that sense. And um, she is very beautiful, but it's, it's kind of she asked me about her and I, what I thought and I was like well she's a beautiful woman but doesn't really say anything because most people are judge beauty on two separate um, sort of uh, factors this would be a correct word you judge beauty from an like an, an appearance beauty but that's most people would contend that that's not enough that's not nearly enough to say something about a person's true beauty, and I think true true beauty would be a, a um, sort of mix between appearance beauty and maybe chemical beauty, because some people are more inclined to like other people, like pheromones and stuff. Pheromones, 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 pheromones. Um, so that's one part of it. And another part of it is personality, of course. Uh, we don't tend to like, like all the people we meet. Some people we don't like because they don't have the matching personalities or they don't have the personality which holds, contains factors or, or stuff that we find important in our lives and in our way of kind of looking at people. Uh, I think most people would agree with that, that that's you can't base beauty just on one factor, appearance. Um, and I found that, but that's my appearance. Uh, oh, oh, did get by? Good. Uh, some people, it's uh, going back to uh, not fact, uh, fact based uh, <laughs> reasoning from my side. Um, if you go to science, uh, there are some theories, I uh, don't know if they're, well I guess there's some sort of um, experimentally based uh, theories which says that beauty is usually in the way our, it's like a evolutionary, uh, this is evolutionary psychology by the way, um, so it's people that are judged as more beautiful are more symmetrical and the logic behind why that would be more beautiful is that uh, symmetry sort of um, actually um, signals um, a good good sort of first environmental well good genes first it, it signals good genes but it also signals um, good genes and um, a good first growth period when your fetus. So basically, uh, being asymmetrical is a sign of some issues when you were a uh, fetus. Doesn't sound very fair, does it? Like, so so you had a bad time with something you can't really affect the way you built and your, your symmetry. Uh, suddenly, the basis of 
if people like you or not. But the theory says that's the way it is. And I would sort to say agree with that notion. Unless you have a lot of money, uh, you will be judged by your appearance firstly. Just look at like these um, web-based dating things like Tinder or you swipe right and left or whatever you do. Um, it's purely on appearance. Unfortunately. But that's the way our brain works. It, it judges beauty on symmetry and if you're if you like me and I am asymmetri asymmetrical and I am just look you should look at my ears now um, um, ears are in different heights which makes my if you look put take my glasses put it on glasses not a thing of judging bad genes uh, if you put my glasses on the table they're not straight <laughs> so so people are all people are to some degree asymmetrical because if you took if you take pictures of people if you take like pictures of their faces and and you half them and put them together again, then we would have a perfect symmetry that looks tend to looks quite weird people think it looks weird but uh, so we don't really like total asymmetry we need some sort of asymmetry to like people but uh, the more symmetrical the more people the more likable they are, the, the higher their beauty is judged by people, and also um, the more um, the more symmetrical you, the higher your life earnings will be, um, the better jobs you will have, the better careers you will have. Um, if you do sports, the, the higher symmetrical value you have, uh, the more the better you will be at sports. Very interesting theory, and I think it holds up pretty fairly good scientifically. Unfortunately for me, I guess. Um, so we'll start here. So unfortunately, no, that's not working. Why is that not working? Because I haven't lowered the pickup. So the first one, first one will be a hay bale, fortunately. But the next one will be a grass bale, I think. Um, so if you look at that symmetry theory, or theory of symmetry, or whatever you want to call it, uh, no, it's too late. I thought I was going to drop it somewhere closer to the other one, the other hay bale we have. We could go pick them up with the. And tractor we have over by, over by our uh, over by our stables. By the way. Um. So uh, basically, the more symmetrical you are, the better your life will be. You have more money. You will have greater success with the opposite sex or the same sex if you that uh, have that inclination um, everything is better so I talked about my to my friend about this that she her friend is probably more likely to choose a partner which has the same amount of symmetrical appearance uh, so because her friend is a beautiful woman and I'm, uh, the reason why I think she is beautiful is that she has more symmetry. She's more symmetrical than a lot of other people are. Some people would argue that that's not true but I think it's mostly true. It was probably not as true before when we didn't have as much social contact when we lived in small villages, but I think it was pretty. Tr but by back then, it was probably true. Also, but in another way, if you had um, good success in life, uh, you would tend to be richer, and that would make make you able to pick your spouse in a better way, or it was picked bef at to you by your parents, and that would be based on um, 
sort of how much money the other person's family had, and that would be linked to symmetrical and that sort of stuff. So anyway, um, um, you can try you like run that theory in, in absurdum. But it's a theory, and it's true, and it, and it seems to hold up pretty good scientifically when it's, you try to prove it. And um, so my call, my friend's friend there, uh, she would be more likely to pick a spouse or a partner that has the same symmetrical appearance that she does, and since she and she has a pretty high symmetrical appearance or quota or whatever you want to call it, she would probably tend to pick some with the same sort of statue which would mean that she would not pick people that doesn't fit that um, so which sort of holds up with my uh, with my my own th and this is not scientifically um, my own sort of experience from life um, beautiful women don't tend to go for beautiful men uh, sorry, uh, um, oh, beautiful women don't tend to go for um, no, uh, ugly men unless they have a lot of money because then all the bets are off um, but um, otherwise if you are an as asymmetrical man as I am um, well, tough shit, you need to find an asymmetrical woman if you're gonna follow the science of course, there are exceptions, but <laughs> pretty rare, unfortunately. Um, so the science kind of holds up, even though I hoped it wouldn't. It would be nice if it did, hadn't hold up, held up, uh, for the asymmetrical people like I am. Anyway, think about it. If you look at people in your around you and you look at how sort of symmet not symmetrical, it's hard to calculate, but uh, how beautiful you think they are, both men and women, and you see how, how they're doing in life. You well, have a look at it and see if it ex your experience matches my experience. I think it will though unfortunately. Of course there are exceptions. P some people are really charming and they get around by being charming. And the personality sometimes, well, sometimes will override their set statue. But um, it's not really simple to do that. It's a little bit hard to get out of the, your statue group or your beauty group or whatever you want to call it. We need to back it up a little bit, I think. Okay. You go. Bail and that bail and that bail, lots of bails. Let's see, maybe we should do the headland later. Here, quite a lot. You get quite a lot of bales. This is a smaller field compared to that one, the hay bale we just did on the last episode. But uh, you did get quite a lot of bales on it. Still, oh, I should have chosen that one. Well, we'll go up and down this one, and we'll have that bit of the area field up now, oh, or just.
Oh, what happened now? Ooh. I was like, what's going on? Not a good thing when stuff freezes. I said, I, I should probably save here, sorry. I haven't saved in a while, so I should save. I'm thinking I'm going to stop there, so basically I'm just going to continue this bailing stuff. Uh, until next time, we'll really see what we'll do then, if we'll do wrapping, or if I'll be, maybe I'll be complete with everything. I'm done with everyth everything I'm going to do, or something, but uh, we'll sort of, we'll see where we end up. Sometimes when you're recording stuff, it does take a lot, a long time to save the map, like this one. Anyway, thank you for watching this episode of Bjork Top Gord. I'm Andy. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this episode, please hit like button, leave a comment or share. Come on, save so I can stop this episode. <laughs> it's saving and saving and saving and saving and saving and saving a lot of time. It's a lot of saving going on. It's a lot of saving going on. Why wonder why it's taking so long and I should not turn off my computer. It says so. Please do not please do not turn off your computer. You know why won't? Because I don't want this to be destroyed. I want this to be saved. Oh weird. No, it's only No, it's done. Good. Okay, anyway, take care. Bye bye.